This is your host Danny and this is Business from English Plus podcast. In today's episode we're going to continue our business course which we started last week and today we're going to talk about work and motivation. We're going to discuss the importance of motivation. We are going to compare and summarize various theories of motivation and finally we will consider the best way to motivate people in specific situations. Last time we talked about management, today we're going to continue talking about management, but we're not only going to talk about setting and communicating objectives, developing strategies, allocating resources. Yeah, that is obviously management, but managers have to motivate the staff who report to them. So that is the topic of today's episode. Before we start, allow me to give a big thanks from the bottom of my heart to Piotr Volnovsky for his generous contribution to our learning community. Piotr is our latest patron and for that my friend, I can't thank you enough because this is the only way that will keep this learning community alive and independent. This is the target we're all aiming at, to have an independent learning community. The ones who've been listening to English Plus for a long time know that I have never included any ads in the podcast, not because I hate money, not at all, but because that will disrupt the educational atmosphere I've been trying to build in this podcast for a long time. So hopefully we will never have to include any ads and we will be independent. And to do that, I will need more support from you. I will need more support from the community. If you're listening to me, if you believe in the mission of English Plus as much as I do, please become a patron of English Plus and help this learning community survive, grow and thrive. The link is in the description. It will take you to my Patreon page where you can support me and the learning community. Just do like Piotr and the other 11 patrons that we have so far. And now back to our business episode for today, work and motivation. Before I start talking about work and motivation, there's one more thing. There is a link in the description that will take you to the custom post I created for this episode. Well, for other episodes, it might just be a comprehension check, which is very important, by the way. For some episodes, you might watch the video like in the Learn From Games episodes. But for the grammar episode and the business episode, the link is very important because it includes a lot of practice and the practice in our business episodes is a lot more interactive than the one in our grammar episodes of course if you just want to listen to the episode you will learn a lot i promise you that but if you really want to learn and interact with the learning community take the link and go to the website i have included everything even discussion questions on the website so that you can get a chance to talk about the things you're learning that's the best way to learn in business Don't just take things in, talk about them, discuss them. Because in business, it is so different from many other things you can learn in English or in other things. You don't have a clear answer. You don't have a correct answer and a wrong answer. In business, we usually have open answers. There is no right and wrong answer. But of course, you need to justify your answer. You need to know how to discuss your answer. You need to know why you came up with this result or that. And that is something I can help you with, with the special practice I included in this custom post I created for this episode. The link is in the description. Take the link, go to my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com and learn a lot more. And now, without further ado, let's start talking about work and motivation. So, as I said earlier, this is also part of management. We're still talking about management, but as well as setting and communicating objectives, developing strategies, and allocating resources, managers have to motivate the staff who report to them. These will often include people with interesting, responsible, and fulfilling jobs, as well as others with less interesting and highly repetitive tasks. Today, we're going to talk about different factors that might motivate workers in both types of job and about whether it can be argued that people in general like or dislike working. We will have some listenings and readings in which we will discuss two very well-known theorists of the psychology of work, Douglas MacGregor, who put forward his theories X and Y, and Frederick Hertzberg, who distinguished between satisfiers, also referred to as hygiene factors, and motivators. 
We will also talk about Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is something that has been a reference for all business students for a very long time. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's not waste any more time. And let's start with a very simple thing that I want you to think about. And of course, remember, you can always participate in the discussion on the website. And the things I want you to think about are the motivators. As I said, one of the most important responsibilities of a manager is to motivate the people who report to him or her. But how? What kind of things motivate you? You should ask yourself this question first. If you are a manager or an employee, it doesn't matter. Whether you have people reporting to you or not, it doesn't matter. You can have a say in this. Even if you don't manage anybody and everybody manages you, so to speak, you can let your managers know about that. But apart from that, let's talk about the things that motivate you. Think about yourself first, and then we will talk about different kinds of people and different kinds of motivators that different people react to. So I will give you examples of motivators, and I want you to think about these motivators. Do these things really motivate you? And how important are they? Now, if you're on the website, you will have a chance to discuss this question as well. But for the ones who are just listening to the podcast, I want you maybe to pause the episode and think about these things I'm going to tell you about. Think about them in the sense of how important these things are to you. Which of these things motivate you the most? Which of these things motivate you the least or not at all, maybe? You can even classify them in order of importance if you like. So what are these things? Now, I will start with the very first thing. Good remuneration. Remuneration, we're talking about salary, commission, bonuses, perks, etc. So all the money you get, the package, the whole package. Maybe this is one of the most important things that motivate you, maybe not. So think about it. Another thing, good working relations with your line manager and colleagues. Does that motivate you? Does this good working relations with your line managers and colleagues motivate you? Or maybe it's not that important to you. What about good working conditions? A large office, quiet office, maybe efficient secretaries to make your life easier. Maybe that motivates you, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it is very important, maybe it's not that important. You will have to decide. What about job security? Does that motivate you? Does it motivate you to have job security when you really know that you can't lose your job that easily? Does the possibility of promotion motivate you? Now, you may work in a place and there's no guarantee that you will be promoted, but there is this possibility of promotion. If there is this possibility of promotion, does that motivate you? Do you think that is important or not? What about a challenging job? Do you prefer a challenging job or no, I would like to have this repetitive task where I don't have to think about what I do. There are no challenges, just this repetitive task. What motivates you? And remember, there are no right and wrong answers. Just answer according to what you think, what you believe. What else? Does responsibility motivate you? If you have responsibilities at work, does that motivate you? What about contact with people? Does contact with people motivate you? What about a belief in what the organization does? How much do you care about this? Do you do the job just because it's a job and I don't care what the company makes, whether it's weapons or the next vaccine that's going to save humanity from the next virus or something? Does it matter to you what your organization does? Or no, for you, it doesn't matter. All I care about is just the job I do. I do it well. I get paid and that's it. So for you, is it a factor, the belief you have in what the organization does? What about feeling that you can make a difference in your job? Does that feeling motivate you when you work in a place and you know that you can make a difference? And what about opportunities to travel? Does having opportunities to travel motivate you? Maybe business class or first class? Who knows? Does that motivate you if there is an opportunity to travel and travel a lot maybe? What about long holidays and vacations? So I mentioned some of the things, some of the most common things people talk about as motivators. Are these things motivators to you? And of course, maybe all of them are good to have. But which ones are the most important motivators to you? Or in general, you can talk about it in general, but I would really love for you to think about what really motivates you first and then talk about it in general. And thinking about this, maybe there are some other important motivators you would like to add to this list. So if you have other important motivators that I failed to mention in this list that I just gave you, please share what you think in the discussion section we have on the website. 
So now I want you to think about that. Think about it. Maybe pause the episode for a little while. Think about these things, whether you want to discuss them with me or not. But I want you to discuss them with someone. If you don't want to discuss these things with anybody, no problem. At least think about them. Maybe really put a pen and paper and start shuffling things around. Put the ones that are more important first and maybe classify them in order of importance. Whatever you want. But I want you to think about these things before we start talking about those theories because that will help help you understand what I'm going to talk about and about those big shot theorists that talked about motivation at work. So think about those things I told you about, maybe even discuss them on the website with me or discuss them with anybody you like, and I will see you next to talk about attitudes to work. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Looking to enhance your English skills while exploring a world of knowledge? Then English Plus Podcast website is just for you. Dive into diverse topics ranging from science to literature, history to business, and myths to modern insights. Each episode from our podcast or article from our magazine is a journey of learning and discovery, designed to not only improve your language skills, but also broaden your understanding of the world. Join us at English Plus Podcast, where language meets limitless learning. Tune in today and take your English to the next level. Visit EnglishPlusPodcast.com to start your journey. English Plus Podcast, language, learning, enlightenment. Never stop learning with English Plus. So now that we've thought of some of the things that motivate us the most and others that motivate us the least or things that don't motivate us at all, let's think about something else. Let's talk about attitudes to work. Now, I will start with some sentences and I want you to think about those sentences as well, whether you agree or disagree with them. And again, you can discuss that on the website. Everything is on the website. But anyway, if you're just listening to the episode, I really want you to think about these things. And if I'm too fast, please pause the audio and think before you continue listening to the episode. Now, I have some statements and these things will make it easier for us to understand what comes next, which is theory X and theory Y. But before we talk about theory X and theory Y, let's think about those sentences. I will give you a couple of ideas and I want you to agree or disagree, but please have a reason. Even if you don't want to share the reason with me, no problem. But at least you should have a reason, even if you're thinking to yourself, no problem. But have a reason why you agree or disagree. And even better, try to think about the reason, write it down or talk about it in English. Because that is what will advance your English forward and especially in a business context. Let me start with the very first attitude. People dislike work and avoid it if they can. What do you think about that? Do you agree with this? Do you agree that people in general dislike work and avoid it if they can? Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Think about it. What about the next idea? Work is necessary to people's psychological well-being. Well, is it? Is work necessary to people's psychological well-being? If you don't work, you will have not problems, but you will not have a balanced life. Your well-being is not going to be that well. So, do you agree? You disagree with that? Why and why not? People avoid responsibility and would rather be told what to do. Do you agree with this or no? Some people think no, generally people love responsibility. They don't want to be bossed around. But some other people think no, that's the case. People avoid responsibility and would rather be told what to do. Just tell me what to do. I'll do it with no responsibility whatsoever. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. But remember, think about why or why not. And now for the next attitude. People are motivated mainly by money. Maybe you agree, but remember, I'm saying motivated. Everybody is motivated by money, of course. But I'm saying here mainly by money so that it is more important than anything else. Do you agree with that or disagree? Why? Why not? What about the next attitude? Most people are far more creative than their employers realize. Do you agree with that? And by all means, draw from your personal experiences. I don't want you to generalize and think about it in the realm of imagination. Not at all. 
draw from your own work experience. Of course, you don't have to name names and tell me about the company name you work for, or even your boss's name. That's not important, but just the ideas you talk about. Definitely, if you have some work experience and you want to talk about it based on your work experience, that's even better. Now, let's move on to the next idea. People are motivated by fear of losing their job. So if they kind of have this fear, they are motivated to do more work. Do you agree? Disagree? Why is that? What about the next attitude? People want to be interested in their work and given the right conditions, they will enjoy it. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Do you agree that people want to be interested in their work and they may even enjoy it given the right conditions? And finally, there's this last attitude to work. Under the right conditions, most people will accept responsibility and will want to realize their own potential. What do you think about that? Well, I want you again to think about these things. Think about these attitudes to work. You may agree with some of them, may disagree with some others, but I want you to give me the reason why. I want you at least to think about the reason why. And if you want to share, of course, you can share on the website. The link is in the description. I will remind you again, take the link, go to the website, listen to the episode and do some activities and exercises. Make it more interactive. That's what I really want to achieve, especially in season three. I'm trying to make those episodes more interactive, as interactive as I can. And I want you to think about something that is very important. When we want to discuss something, this is not a job interview. This is not part of therapy or anything. I'm not going to judge you. Nobody is going to judge you. Just say what you think. And there are no right and wrong answers. There are many different types of answers. As long as you have reasons why you agree or disagree, that's fine. But don't go just like, yeah, I agree with that. I disagree with that. Well, why? Why is the more important thing here? Not just agree or disagree. Thinking about the why, discussing the why with someone, with me, with the community, with yourself, it doesn't matter. That will help you understand business better and, of course, improve your own English. Now, by the way, these attitudes I just told you to think about can be separated into two groups. And Douglas McGregor, an American expert on the psychology of work, summarized these two approaches and named them Theory X and Theory Y. And that is what we're going to talk about next. We're going to talk about McGregor's ideas, Theory X and Theory Y. And we're going to talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So take your time. Think about these statements. These will serve as a very good introduction of Theory X. X and theory Y. That's what we're going to do next. So now let's talk about theory X and theory Y based on what Douglas McGregor outlined in The Human Side of Enterprise, which is a famous book in the world of business psychology. And by the way, this is just like reading or listening, and you will find it on the website as well. If you go to the website, you will find this piece of reading. And if you would like to consider it just as listening, so just listen to it. So theory X and theory Y. Here we go. In The Human Side of Enterprise, Douglas McGregor outlined two opposing theories of work and motivation. What he calls Theory X is the rather pessimistic approach to workers and working which assumes that people are lazy and will avoid work and responsibility if they can. Consequently, workers have to be closely supervised and controlled and told what to do. They have to be both threatened, for example, with losing their job and rewarded with incentives, probably monetary ones such as a pay rise or bonuses. Theory X assumes that most people are incapable of taking responsibility for themselves and have to be looked after. It has traditionally been applied, for example, by managers of factory workers in large-scale manufacturing. So that was Theory X. What about Theory Y? Theory Y, on the contrary, assumes that most people have a psychological need to work. And given the right conditions, job security, financial rewards, they will be creative, ambitious, and self-motivated by the satisfaction of doing a good job. Theory Y is probably more applicable to skilled professionals and what Peter Drucker called knowledge workers. These are like managers, specialists, programmers, scientists, engineers, than people in unskilled jobs. McGregor's two theories are based on Abraham Maslow's famous hierarchy of needs. 
Theory X relates to the basic lower order needs at the bottom of the hierarchy such as financial security, while Theory Y relates to higher order needs such as esteem, achievement, status and responsibility, and self-actualization, personal growth and fulfillment that can be pursued if basic needs are satisfied. McGregor is widely considered to have laid the foundations for the modern people-centered view of management. However, Maslow himself spent a year studying a Californian company that used Theory Y and concluded that there are many people who are not looking for responsibility and achievement at work. There will always be people with little self-discipline who need security and certainty and protection against the burden of responsibility. So it is impossible to simply replace the authoritarian theory X with the progressive theory Y. So that is in a nutshell what theory X and theory Y is all about. Do you know what we're going to do next? I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and then I will go back to these attitudes I told you to think about and discuss and relate them to theory X or theory Y, classify them, which ones relate more to theory X and which ones relate more to theory Y. Now that you have a good idea what theory X is and what theory Y is. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Well, Maslow thought that people have a hierarchy of needs. It starts with the basic ones, the lower ones, and in a nutshell, of course, it's a big idea and has a lot of details, but I will try to explain it to you in simple terms. You start with the lower levels. The lower levels are the basic needs, and in order to think about higher level needs, you need to satisfy the lower ones. And he starts at the bottom with the physiological needs. These are the things that you need to have first. If you don't have these, according to Maslow, of course, you can think of higher ones. Or at least these will be your top priority and the ones above are not going to be a priority of yours. The physiological needs like air, food, drink, clothing, shelter, sleep, warmth, etc. This is the first level, the physiological needs. Then the next level is the safety needs, security, protection, stability, etc. Then, when you satisfy these needs, you will have the next level, which is love and belonging needs. Family, friendships, relationships, work groups, etc. After you satisfy those needs, you have the next level, which is the esteem needs. Achievement, status, recognition, reputation, etc. And finally, the highest of all these levels is the self-actualization needs, personal growth and fulfillment. So maybe you agree with Maslow, maybe you disagree. Well, personally, I agree to a great extent, but it is not easy to just generalize those ideas because people are different. People focus on different kinds of needs and there is no one rule that tells you that this is the way to go. People are different and that's why you have to act differently. As a manager, you have to act differently. You have to manage people differently based on who they are. You have to know who they are. But that aside, let's come back to theory X and theory Y. I will go back to these eight statements I gave you earlier and I want you to think about whether they belong to theory X, the authoritarian theory, or theory Y, the progressive one. Let me start with the first one. People dislike work and avoid it if they can. What do you think? Is that theory X or theory Y? If you thought theory X, congratulations, because that is theory X. Now for the next one. Work is necessary to people's psychological well-being. What do you think? Theory X or Y? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Unlock the marvels of mycology and take a journey of deep discovery into the divine. Lordofspore.com has 21 unique varieties of magic mushroom spores that will open doors you never knew existed. From the shamanic rituals of 10,000-year-old tribes, to Plato, Socrates, the Dionysian mysteries, and even early Christianity, entheogens have been the key to unlocking the secrets of the infinite realm that we are all part of, offering us mere mortals a glimpse into the sacred meaning of everything we see, and everything we don't. Join us on our journey. It starts with a few microscopic mushroom spores, and it grows into a network across time and space, connecting us all to infinity and beyond. Well, the answer here is why, theory why. 
Now for the next one. People avoid responsibility and would rather be told what to do. What do you think? Authoritarian X or progressive Y? Well, obviously, it is X. And now for the next one. People are motivated mainly by money. What do you think? X or Y? Well, this is also X, obviously. And now for the next one. Most people are far more creative than their employers realize. What do you think of this one? X or Y? Well, obviously, this belongs to theory Y. And now for the next one. People are motivated by fear of losing their job. What do you think? Is that theory X or theory Y? Well, obviously, this is theory X. And now what about the next one? People want to be interested in their work and given the right conditions, they will enjoy it. What do you think? X or Y? Well, obviously, this belongs to theory Y. Now for the very last one. Under the right conditions, most people will accept responsibility and will want to realize their own potential. Does this attitude belong to theory X or theory Y? Well, obviously, again, this belongs to theory Y. Now, I hope you have a better understanding of theory X and theory Y and Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And you might think to yourselves, who on earth thinks that theory X is valid anymore? Well, a lot of people, actually, in a lot of businesses and in the places where you don't expect there are big believers in theory X until this very day. Well, maybe you can share what you think about this as well, but I don't think it's X or Y. It's not just black or white. It's mostly gray. Most people fall somewhere in between. Maybe the best way to go is to have a combination of Theory X and Theory Y. And again, remember that Maslow himself criticized Theory Y on its own because he concluded that there are many people who are not looking for responsibility and achievement, and there will always be people with little self-discipline. So, as I told you, it's not just black or white. It's always somewhere in between, and it is different for different people. Maybe for some people, Theory X is a must, because that is the only way you can motivate them to work. And for some other people, Theory Y is the only way you can motivate these people, using the concepts from Theory Y, obviously. So, it is up to you as a manager to decide. You have to know your people better. You have to know the people you work with better. Or the people who report to you, obviously. The better you know them, the better decisions you can make about how to motivate these people. And by the way, talking about Theory X and Theory Y, there's also Theory Z, which is not very popular, especially not in the US, because that belongs more to the Japanese management style. Now, that Theory Z was proposed by another American management theorist. His name is William Auchi in 1981, based on the dominant Japanese management style at the time. Now, Japanese companies often guaranteed long-term, even lifelong employment, and were concerned with the employee's well-being. In return, workers could be expected to be loyal to the company and to participate fully in decision-making. Working relationships tended to be cooperative, with managers able to have a lot of trust in their staff who were offered continuous training and so became generalists rather than specialists. Auchi argued that Theory Z management led to stable employment, high productivity, and high staff morale and satisfaction. Now, given that American companies do not usually guarantee long-term employment, however, Theory Z has had a limited impact in the U.S. But anyway, we will talk more about this later down the line in our course when we talk about labor market efficiency and job security as a subject. But we will talk about that down the line. For now, I just want you to know that there is also Theory Z. But as I told you, Theory Z was never that popular. The more popular ones, the more popular theories were Theory X and Theory Y. And now it's your turn. I have a couple of questions to you. And I'm not going to give you the answers to these questions, but of course, you can practice on the website. Now, I have three comprehension questions. I want you to think about these questions, and based on what I said about Theory X and Theory Y and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I want you to think about the answers. According to Theory X, why do employees have to be closely controlled? 
And here again, I'm not talking about your opinion. I want you to answer based on what you listened to or based on what you read if you're on the website. And the second question, according to theory why, why should employers give their workers responsibilities? And the last question, why did Maslow criticize theory why? Okay, these are three questions for you to think about. If you're listening and if you're just listening, pause the audio, try to think about the answers. I'm not going to give you the answers to those in the audio podcast. You can find them on the website. You can check them later if you want. And there's also a writing assignment, but I will have to say that this is exclusive to my patrons only because I will be honest with you. I don't have time to grade writings from all around the world. It takes a lot of time. But for my patrons, so far, I can do that. But by all means, it's right there and there is a sample answer. If you want to try writing and then check sample answers, you compare the answers yourselves, you're more than welcome. But for my patrons, you have the opportunity to send me those writings. You can send me those writings, I will check them myself and give you my personal feedback with suggestions to improve your writing and your language as well. So you will also find this mini writing assignment on the website because the big writing assignment is at the end of this episode. And now I have a couple of things for you to discuss, just like we did earlier in the episode. I don't have to say that again, but you can do that on the website or you can think about that to yourselves or you can discuss that with someone you have around you, your sister, your brother, your wife, your husband, your children, your friends. I don't know. Someone to discuss that with. That will help you understand better what we're talking about. That will help you shape your opinion. Because sometimes it's easy to say that I have an opinion, but if you don't think about your opinion, if you don't justify your opinion, when you talk to people, your argument will be weak, especially in business environments. You will have to think about these things, discuss them with people. So when it matters, you give your opinion and you have a solid argument. Because guess what? You practice this. We need to practice everything, even our opinions. We need to have solid arguments behind what we think. So, the two questions that I have for you to discuss. Let's start with the first one. In your working experience, even if it's only weekend or temporary summer holiday jobs, doesn't matter. Have your supervisor seemed to believe in theory X or theory Y? Now, you know what theory X is and what theory Y is. So, based on your working experience, no matter what kind of working experience it is, Do you think that your supervisors believed more in theory X or theory Y? Or did they have a kind of mixture between theory X or theory Y? Or maybe you can tell me my supervisors did not believe in anything. They were moody. One day they were good, the other day they were bad. I don't know. It's your working experience. Discuss that. The next question I would like you to think about and discuss if possible on the website or with anybody you like. What would you do to try to motivate subordinates who did not want to take responsibilities at work and who had uninteresting repetitive jobs? Maybe you would tell me, I don't have the situation. Well, what would you do? That's why I asked you, what would you do? Now, it might be for you that what do you do? Because you're already doing it. But it's a hypothetical question. What would you do to try to motivate people who report to you, your subordinates, who did not want to take responsibilities at work and who had uninteresting repetitive jobs? So think about these two questions. And by the way, I am working on a platform or thinking, not working on a platform, actually thinking about the best platform to integrate on the website and with this podcast to have those discussions even in a better place. It's definitely not going to be Facebook because Facebook is too open and, you know, it's a different vibe. But maybe I'm going to include Discord. I'm thinking about it. I'm just trying to learn about the pros and cons, but it will be available soon and there will be some VIP status for my patrons. So that is another reason for you to become patrons. That's also coming soon. And by the way, I will have to thank Rada again because that was his suggestion to include something that will enable our learning community practice speaking a little bit more. So I have a couple of ideas in mind, but our discussion community will be up and running soon. But anyway, now you can use the website. Definitely you can use the website. So go there, discuss these questions, maybe pause the audio, think about them. And when you come back, we will talk about satisfiers and motivators or what Frederick Herzberg calls the hygiene factors. So we talked about theory X and theory Y, but another well-known theorist of the psychology of work, 
Frederick Hertzberg has argued that good working conditions are not sufficient to motivate people. Now, I also have another small text, or listening, obviously, to find out why. Why does he think so? It is logical to suppose that things like good labor relations, good working conditions, job security, good wages and benefits such as sick pay, paid holidays and a pension are incentives that motivate workers. But in the motivation to work, Frederick Hertzberg argued that such conditions, which he called hygiene factors, do not in fact motivate workers. They are merely satisfiers, or more importantly, dissatisfier where they do not exist. Workers who have them take them for granted. As Hertzberg put it, a reward once given becomes a right. Motivators, on the contrary, include things such as having a challenging and interesting job, recognition and responsibility, promotion, and so on. Unless people are motivated and want to do a good job, they will not perform well. However, there are and always will be plenty of boring, repetitive, and mechanical jobs and lots of unskilled workers who have to do them. How can managers motivate people in such jobs? One solution is to give them some responsibilities, not as individuals, but as part of a team. For example, some supermarkets combine office staff, the people who fill the shelves, and the people who work on the checkout tills into a team and let them decide what product lines to stock how to display them, and so on. Other employers encourage job rotation as doing four different repetitive jobs a day is better than doing only one. Many people now talk about the importance of a company's shared values or corporate culture, with which all the staff can identify. For example, being the best hotel chain or hamburger restaurant chain or airline or making the best, safest, most user-friendly, most ecological or most reliable products in a particular field. But unfortunately, not all the competing companies in an industry can seriously claim to be the best. So that's what Hertzberg thought. And that is the hygiene factor. Or if you want to remember them, because hygiene, you might think about cleanliness. Well, it's not about cleanliness, but this is about satisfiers and motivators. He clearly differentiated between satisfiers and motivators. Now, let me check your comprehension. It's a good idea, no? Let me check your comprehension of what we just talked about. I will give you a couple of sentences and you will decide if these sentences are true or false. But remember, true or false, not in your opinion, but according to what I just told you about Hertzberg. Let me start with the very first one. Hertzberg argued that hygiene factors motivate workers. Is that true or false? Think about it. Well, obviously, it's false. He argued that they can only satisfy or dissatisfy, but not motivate. So the first one is false. Now, how about this one? Challenging jobs and responsibility are hygiene factors. What do you think? Is that true or false? Well, that's also false, because according to Hertzberg, these are not satisfiers. These are not hygiene factors. These are motivators. How about the next one? Some unskilled jobs will always be boring and repetitive. What do you think? Is that true or false? Well, unfortunately, that is true. According to Hertzberg and according to everybody around the world, that is true. Now the next one. Workers might be motivated by having responsibilities as part of a team. According to Hertzberg, what do you think? Is that true or false? Well, obviously, that is also true. This is exactly what he talked about. Now, the next one. Job rotation can make a day's work more interesting. What do you think? True or false? Well, this is, again, obviously true. And what about this last one? You can always motivate workers by telling them that they work for the best company in the field. Is that true or false? Well, this one is false because not all companies can be the best in their field. I mean, if you are the best in your field, or at least if you claim to be the best in your field, yes, you can tell your employees that. But what if you're not even close? What are you going to tell them? I'm the best and 
everybody knows that you're not even close to being the best. So that is not true. And now for the ones who are listening to the podcast and you're not on the website, we are getting close to the end of the episode. But this episode does not end on the website because after this, you will have a vocabulary exercise or you will have to guess the meanings of some words or actually it's the opposite. I will give you the meaning and you will try to find the words in context. We will have a couple of listenings and some questions. You will listen to students talking about managers and monitors and you will answer some questions that's also available on the website so it is extra practice now for the main ideas yes i included them in the podcast and i hope that you learned a lot from that but there's also more to learn on the website take the link please if you haven't already take the link i understand maybe you're just listening to the podcast and you can't actually go to the website but you can do it later if you're on your way to work or if you're doing something else and you can't actually pick your phone and start answering questions no no problem at all because after all this is a podcast but if you want more you can always have more on the website englishpluspodcast.com the link is in the description as i told you there's going to be some extra vocabulary exercises some extra listening exercises and of course more discussion to come and we have the case study and the final writing which again i will put on the website and you're all welcome to try i will even give you a sample answer so that you can check your answers and compare it to the sample answer but for my patrons you have a special opportunity to send me your responses and i will look at them give you my feedback and give you some tips to improve your writing and of course i will discuss the ideas as well with you. And again, I'm sorry that I can't take all responses from everybody and grade them. I would love to, but that would be too overwhelming and too much. I, I don't have time to do all that and still record and do the website because as I told you once, I do all these things by myself. I am this one man show behind English Plus and I need your help. Maybe one day when we become an independent learning community with your help and with a lot of patrons coming our way, I will have some people to help me and I will have more time to do more things for everybody. Now, with that being said, I can't stress enough the importance of taking the link and going to the website to have more practice and more things to do. And for the ones who've been listening to me, I hope you like what we discussed today in today's episode, talked about motivation and people, how to motivate people, theory X, theory Y, theory Z, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and finally Hertzberg's hygiene factors. Maybe this is new for you. Maybe it's not new, but you kind of polished the information you already know. That's all good. Maybe you like the discussions, you like the extra practice. I hope that I did something you like and benefit from. With that being said, this is your host, Danny. Thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time. Of course, we have other episodes to talk about, other interesting things down the line. But for next week's business, if you are really interested in business and you want to know what's coming next, next week, we're going to talk about company structure. Until then, take care. I'll see you next time.